the BMW 1M will be a future classic. The M2, I don't know. I mean, what, are the, what if the production numbers are insane? If they build seven zillion M2s, it probably won't be a classic. I think the VR4 is a future classic uh, just because it's the last turbo Japanese car to appreciate. It's just a really futuristic car. It's like a mini GTR. A future classic that I could buy today would be the Ford GT. It's coming back strong with racing in Daytona and Le Mans. It's gonna be a future classic and I wouldn't bet against Ford. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Doug DeMuro, and welcome to What Car Should You Buy? Your favorite show where we tell you what car you should buy and you tell us why we're wrong. Today, we're discussing future classics. Just a few short years ago, the original Mercedes 190 SL was a $40,000 used car. Now, they're pulling $250,000 at Amelia Island. So, which of today's cars are gonna be future classics? When people are looking for a car that's a future classic, the idea is that they're gonna make money off of it. So if you think of like the traditional cars that are already like increasing in value, like cars like Skylines or NSXs, like it's gonna be hard to make money because they're already reaching classic status. The one car that's never really appreciated or hasn't appreciated yet is the Nissan 300ZX. It looks like a car from the 90s. You don't show that car to someone and go, ah, I don't know, was it made in 2000? No, it, it could only exist for about a six year period of time. People are gonna want that car because it's beautiful and it's quick and it's it's sort of a known quantity from a known family of cars. It, it, it sort of bothers me that people don't like this car that much. There are three reasons why I wouldn't buy a 300ZX Turbo. Uh, one is just that they're hard to work on. You, you gotta take out the engine for anything. They're not that easy to get power out of. It just looks dated. I mean, if you ever see one driving down the street, uh, it looks like uh, fruit stripe gum. It just doesn't look as timeless as something like a RX-7 or a Supra. There's a lot of things that define a classic car, right? So it has to be old and it has to have, I think, some sort of historical point to it. It doesn't have to look crazy, it doesn't have to be something that everyone loved back then, but maybe it's something that over time has really shown to be something that was truly amazing. Ever since cars like the E30 M3, the E34 M5, people have been longing for something like that. And now with the BMW M2, we finally have something that can be held up to such a level. The BMW 1M will be a future classic. The M2, I don't know. I mean, what, are the, what if the production numbers are insane? Like the E36 M3 is not a classic, right? Because they built seven zillion of them. If they build seven zillion M2s, it probably won't be a classic either. A car that you can buy today that would be a future classic, Porsche GT4, for sure. It's something that no one thought Porsche was gonna do. And now that it's finally happened, everyone is like, going crazy. It's a straight up race car and it and like Porsche does so well it doesn't compromise elegance. It's still a beautiful car. If I had to pick, I'd have to say a 997 2.2 turbo. It specifically has to be manual. The whole manual transmission depleting that in itself will become a future classic. The car that you can buy today that I think will be an instant classic is the BMW E46 M3 or the E92 M3. So, you know, it has a V8, it's really powerful, and it was the last M3 to be NA. I actually bought a 1999 Mitsubishi 3000 GT VR4. I think the VR4 is a future classic uh, just because it's the last turbo Japanese car to appreciate. I mean, there are 320 horsepower, twin turbo V6, all-wheel drive, all-wheel steering, it's just a really futuristic car. It's like a mini GTR, and you can find them all day long right now for around 10 to 15 grand for the nicest one ever. You can find one that needs work for four grand. You can't go wrong with a, a GT, um, 3000 GT VR4. What car today would be a future classic? So by that definition, it has to be less than 25 years old, which means that you're just on the edge of a 1991 Porsche 928 GT, which I happen to own, which is absolutely a future classic. This car is basically the Mercedes AMG GT of the past in a more timeless shape. A $3,000 Porsche 928 today will be worth 20, 30, 50 in 10 years. The days of one-off cars and like what's limited run of 500, that's kind of over. Like there are some high performance Mustangs that, that are gonna be classics probably like GT500s and things like that. The new Ford GT will be a future classic, but that's obvious because it's like a million dollar car and they're making four of them and everybody knows that's gonna be a future classic. A future classic that I could buy today would be the Ford GT. It's coming back strong with racing in Daytona and Le Mans. It's gonna be a future classic and I wouldn't bet against Ford. 
All right, the car that you can buy today that I know will be a future classic is the Lotus Elise. 30 years from now, you'll go, oh, you could buy that here? And the answer is yes, you could buy that here. It looks unlike anything else on the road, unless it's another Lotus. It feels unlike anything else on the road, unless it's another Lotus. And it's just, people go, what the hell is that? Your average person in the Midwest might not know what a Lotus is or where you can even get one, but that's why it'll be perfect. The one I think of all the ones that sort of stands out as a car that you can buy right now, which will become a classic in the future, is one that like would have to be very much of the time now. And I think of all of those, it would be the BMW i8. It's BMW's like one of their first two carbon fiber cars that they're putting out. It's so revolutionary among sports cars, among hybrids, among the next generation of high tech advanced vehicles. You park that car on the street next to any car that you can buy new today in 2016, and all those other cars look like they're 10 years old immediately. I really think that the i8 is going to have the same kind of following that the original Gullwing Mercedes has. It shows gearheads that hybrids and advanced technology cars don't have to be dull commuters. Well, folks, thanks for listening to our opinions. Now, feel free to sound off on your own opinions below or in the comment section on Jalopnik. And remember, nothing we say should be taken as legitimate investment advice since we have very little idea what we're actually talking about. Talking! Y yeah, Mom. Talking, the, the, the steering wheel's on the wrong side of the car. Yeah, you know, it's just one of those things. It's from another country. you got to shift to the other hand. It's a, it's a process. Can you drive me to the grocery store? No, I'm, I'm doing something right now, Mom. Sorry. You wonder if there will be any future classics that emerge from this. I mean, the Isuzu Via Cross, of course. The Subaru Baja, I think we, uh, we could all agree on. And what would you say to somebody who maybe doesn't like BMWs? Uh, they can suck my dick. <laughs> There's a lot of future classics. But there are even classics that are not yet deemed classics from... Uh, uh, start up. The Lotus Elises are definitely a future classic because it's rare. In 30 years, it will be 30 years old, so <laughs> always thinking about that. You show up at a 928, cop pulls you over. What he says? Change your license plate to Montana and get Tony on it. Good God, why would you invest money in a car? That's the dumbest thing you could possibly invest money in. That's like, that's dumber than stocks, that's dumber than bonds, that's dumber than uh, Beanie Babies. You can't crash a Beanie Baby, you can definitely crash a car.